Good evening. You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Well, ladies and gentlemen, things have escalated since uh, we last spoke. And there's an awful lot to talk about tonight. So uh, run around and get your pens and paper and uh, get something to snack on and maybe a little uh, drink of whatever it is that you like. Find a very comfortable chair and uh, get ready for an interesting evening, to say the least. so hard I had to stop that I mean it just sounds like uh, it sounds like any list on the internet <laughs> don't you think isn't it uh, incredible ladies and gentlemen the amount of rumors that are spread everywhere on fax machines on radio broadcasts from your neighbor to your ear to your other neighbor's ear and so on and so forth, from hand to hand, from car to car. I mean, it's absolutely wild. In fact, it's wilder than wild. It's, uh, it's incredible. How does this happen amongst a supposedly intelligent population? I understand there's a new movie coming out called Gossip. <laughs> Maybe it will give us some insight into ourselves. What do you think? Well, stand by. (laughs) 
It's the uh, whack 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 whacked out contrail report. It's the whack 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 whacked out contrail report. It's the it's the contrail. It's the chemtrail. It's the context. It's the it's the it's the it's the ah, dying. Things fly around, contrail, contrail, I'll fall down. It's your friendly contrail report, starring William Thomas. Here is the, uh, here's what he's put out now. Listen carefully, folks. You don't want to miss a word of this. You don't want to get attacked by one of these vicious contrails now, do you? I hope you've uh, dug your shelter. I hope you have contrail alarms. I hope you have uh, established a countywide watch for contrails. <laughs> Here's what he says. This is William Thomas speaking now, ladies and gentlemen. I now have lab samples from a lab that tested chemtrail fallout without being told what it was. Among other nasties, the lab results show three distinct pathogens airdropped on a garage in the USA. Airdropped on a garage in the USA. Pathogens airdropped on a garage in the USA, probably from leaking nozzles on an approach to a nearby airport. A neighboring house was also splattered. The woman whose place was hit got sick and suffered a severe heart attack a few months later. No, it wasn't from too much cholesterol. It was caused by bacteria eating the walls of her heart. What? What? What would I say? Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> Doyle, come on, stop it, man. Tim, <laughs> cut it out. Hey, I gotta do this contrail report. Do you mind? Will you guys give me a break? Oh, jeez. Oh, this is too much, man. Oh, when you guys get finished, will you, uh, will you let me know? <laughs> How are you gonna make me laugh? Um, <laughs> now, now listen carefully to this, folks. He says, I have other reports. He says, here's what he says now. He says, I have other reports of heart attacks following exposure to this crap. Oh, I thought he said it was a pathogen. Now it's crap. Another one just came in tonight. <laughs> Coincidence? No, it's probably, uh, you know, been a long time since his last meal. <laughs> At least that's what I think. And he says, you bet. We have similar samples from a home in a distant state, and we are now testing for correlation. The EPA registered lab we hired wants to know where we got this biohazard material, which includes organisms found only in a research lab. Other lab tests... Have... All right, don't start, guys. Don't, don't even do it. Uh, where was I? Other lab tests of this fallout have turned up ethylene dibromide. Oh, my goodness. A banned pesticide and component of JP8 that leads to severe upper respiratory distress at low but chronic exposure levels. We found turpentine, a pathogen carrier, but no EDB in our sample. However, <laughs> I, look. If you guys are going to do that, will you please get out of the studio? He says, uh, you bet. I would very much like to get up there and get some samples. I know some angry former Navy carrier jocks who want to take a Learjet and bounce one of these bandits. These <laughs> oh, there they go again. <laughs> well, I can't help it. I can laugh too. I mean, this is just... <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there's no pesticide in JP8. <laughs> Navy carrier duck. <laughs> uh, 
sound like what you've done. You've ruined my whole broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> he says he knows some carrier jocks that want to take a Learjet and, and <laughs> bounce one of those bandits. <laughs> oh my God. This is absolutely incredible. Um, you know, <laughs> thanks. Thanks. You just keep right on trucking right out the door. Thank you very much. And uh, he says, these guys are believers, but since you have already saved us the trouble, I am eager to hear what your Q star found. There's always a chance that... <laughs> there is always a chance that residues... No, don't come back in here. Don't you dare. There is always a chance that residues from intensive weather modification experiments are making people sick on the ground. But how do you explain the bacterial pathogens found in at least five tested samples that I'm aware of? Sure, some samples could have been contaminated by bacteria living, living in the soil. <laughs> <laughs> just cut it out. I can't see. Oh, geez. oh boy. <laughs> try to read this. <laughs> I to read this anyway. Um, <clears throat> by bacteria <laughs> living in... But ours came off aluminum siding and was, <laughs> was documented and gathered by someone skilled in medical sciences. <laughs> Chances of accidental contamination are just about zero. Even before we note that these DNA-altered critters aren't normally found the side of a test tube. <laughs> At the very least, <laughs> will you guys get out of here? Come on, please. At the very least, someone is being very careless in uh, air tra transporting biohazardous materials. I... <laughs> Have you, have you, are you finished? Thank you. Oh, my. Ah, where am I? Or this is an amped up continuation of the open air testing of bio... Where, uh, hmm. Now my tongue is all tied around my wisdom tooth. Or this is an amped up continuation of the open air testing of bio warfare simulants carried out by the U.S. military over hundreds of non-consenting American cities since the 1950s. That much is true. Britain had its own big scandal regarding biowarfare testing revelations just a few weeks ago. According to their Minister of Defense, listen, guys, just, you know, okay, thank you. <laughs> According to their Ministry of Defense, some of those tests involve spray-equipped military aircraft. What is as yet circumstantial but very striking is that in looking at the more than 400 reports I've gathered from pilots, police officers, former and active duty military personnel, as well as folks who have spent years living next to air bases and airports, I see that one heavy spray days, <laughs> heavy spray days invariably coincide with eyewitnesses becoming extremely ill and local hospitals experiencing a spike, a spike, a spike, a spike, a spike. He's been. <laughs> I think he's, I think he's sitting on that spike. 
a spike in emergency admissions for severe gastrointestinal and upper respiratory ailments. <laughs> look a little look a little closer, as I and my team of researchers have, and you will find that the flu epidemic damning hospital emergency rooms and wards of, <laughs> and wards across the US and the and the UK since uh Oh, thank you. Since last December is not flu at all. In fact, clinically tested flu cases are down a bit this year. What is erupting? He's <laughs> what is erupting sky high are flu-like symptoms often manifesting as repeated pneumonia attacks, first-time asthma, and other severe upper respiratory ailments. Look harder, and you will find a growing epidemic of myco. My Mycoplasm infection, <laughs> usually found in 5% of the population, <laughs> and otherwise known as the transmissible component of Gulf War illness. <laughs> now they're spraying us with Gulf War illness from the cocktails. <laughs> oh, I haven't laughed like this in years. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh, oh. that's making my chest hurt. I don't know if I can finish this report, folks. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Oh, <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> uh, he says number two. Come on, guys. Extreme weather events sometimes follow within the same 24 to 48 hour time frame. <laughs> I'm, I'm, oh, God. listen to this. You're not going to believe it. I'm talking 90 tornadoes. 90 tornadoes in a four state area in the middle of winter caused by contrails. <laughs> <laughs> Not 90 tornadoes <laughs> in the middle of winter, repeated snowfall in a desert town, and record-breaking precipitation elsewhere. <laughs> Listen to this. He says, I know how all this sounds. <laughs> <laughs> once, once you see this sky spool from the ground, you'll become a believer, he says. The other night, very late, just after giving a long radio interview in my sky research, I went outside and took a deep, grateful breath. <laughs> I wish I could take a breath. <laughs> Looking up into the clear night sky, I saw a Kim trail spreading out in a in a billowing in a billowing plume just over the ridge across from me. <laughs> oh, God, this end? Oh, chilled my blood. He says the damn Kim cloud could not have been higher than six thousand feet. Please tell me how ice crystals contrails can form at such a low altitude spread out in still air and linger for hours. <laughs> oh my God. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I can't finish this report. <laughs> oh, will you? Will you? <laughs> oh. I can't do it. Jam. Jay, I'm sorry. I can't finish this report. Jay, Jay emailed me and asked me to <laughs> get out of here. Both of you. Jay called me and emailed me. He didn't call me, emailed me. See, now my brain's not working. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> he, <clears throat> he emailed me and... Uh, <laughs> Asked me to do this contrail report tonight. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't. I can't get through it. <laughs> I've never laughed this long in my whole life. <laughs> get out of here. Come on, guys. <laughs> Stop it. 
I mean, come on, come on, come on, just get out. Yeah, that's right, go on. get out of here. Boy, I tell you, I can't stand this, and uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to take a break. Um, I might be back, ladies and gentlemen, I can't promise you. <laughs>
goes that way. Okay. Well, folks, on to the uh, on to the next report. We have uh, a next report here. Yes, we do. We have a next report. This is the racist report. Remember the uh, remember that poor misguided fool that called in last night <coughs> that uh, <coughs> wanted to take over the broadcast and uh, and spew his warped and uh, terrible hatred all over the airwaves. I wonder what happened to him when he was a little baby that made him like that. Well, we may never know. But anyway, this was uh, sent to me by a friend. <clears throat> we'll call him Philip. And he says, To all seekers, much has been said in this medium of the greatness of the Internet for getting information. But I must make this warning. It is often done that leaks are provided to sites that have a good story warning us of this or that about the New World Order are up to, for instance, concentration camps in the U.S., etc., without checking the bona fides of the site itself. I did just this. <coughs> Boy, I laugh so much, I tell you. Still, my chest still hurts. He says, I did just this with the site www.posse-comitatus.org. I'll give you that again. www. Posse, spelled P-O-S-S-E, dash, comitatus, C-O-M-I-T-A-T-U-S, dot O-R-G. Rushing it out without checking, simply because the story sounded urgent. Then I read further, and being worried, asked a naive question of the webmaster. And uh, here it is. <laughs> this is, <clears throat> this is, uh, well, this is, uh, Kind of, uh, kind of very serious, actually, if you want to know the truth. And uh, so, I'm going to read this to you, and uh, you can listen to it, and uh, you know, make up your own mind what you think. And Philip sent this message to the webmaster at posse-comitatus.org, posse-comitatus.org. He says, "I have lots of reading to do on your site." Can you tell me the bottom line? What is the solution for the Jewish problem? Signed Philip. And this is what came back. Subject. Read the Jewish question a question. Praise Yahweh. Of course, the final solution is extermination. That is what they had, have planned for our race over the long haul. To promote homosexuality, abortion, murder of the unborn, and race mixing, multiculturalism. Along with the control of the economy forcing both husband and wife to work outside the home and limit, through finances, the number of children born. We are being bred out of existence by our own greed. What we can do now is to expose the Jew to our race for the evil that it is. Like shining a flashlight on cockroaches, they scatter fast. Before too long, we shall be at war, and with our Father's help, it shall be the last war. The Yehudi Shatan shall be no more, whatever that is. Good reading to you. If you read and comprehend what's on the Posse website, you will be way ahead of the game. Then you must go out and start awakening our sleeping brethren. In Yahshua Messiah, Pastor August B. Kreese, spelled K-R-E-I-S, the third, teacher of Yahweh, Posse Comitatus. And then uh, Philip sent this message back. And when I read it, I laughed again. <laughs> he said, <clears throat> Yes, I understand extermination, but please tell me, do you mean the whole race or only the money power ones? The ordinary Jew or the New World Order bastards? After all, do not we all come from Noah? Signed, Philip. And this came back from Pastor August B. Kreese III <laughs> to Philip. Philip, praise Yahweh. There is no ordinary Jew. A Jew is a Jew is a Jew. When I say Jew, I mean every last breathing son of Cain. And no... We do not all come from Noah because the flood was not universal. The flood was contained in the area in which the Israelites were living at that time. 
they were destroyed by Yahweh because they were committing the same type sins that are going on today. Homosexuality, race mixing, etc., etc. Noah and his family were saved because they were righteous in their generation. They were not polluted through race mixing. They kept themselves pure of race. Nuff said for now. As for Y2K, it has no meaning for myself except to say that we believe that the evil ones are going to use it to try and bring their new world odor to culmination. That there is going to be much confusion and mass hysteria due to shortages and Clintoon will declare martial law for control of the masses. But there's the key to Reverend Crees. Pastor, I should say. Pastor August B. Crees III. He uses the term masses. So, we who believe this are preparing to the best of our ability. Talk to you again in Yeshua, Messiah, Pastor August B. Crees III. And then Philip wrote one last message back to Pastor Crees. The closet socialist. Hitler was a socialist. And Pastor August B. Kreese the Third reveres, even loves Hitler. I know because I've dealt with this creep in the past. Anyway, Philip writes this back and he says, "Well, having absorbed all that, it is obvious that the camps built will not go to waste when you get into power." Taking a good look at your photograph, and he's talking about Pastor August B. Kreese the Third photograph on the Posse Comitatus website. He says. Taking a good look at your photograph, I see no blonde or blue-eyed Aryan. You look Jewish enough to be the first candidate for the gas chamber. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and love thy enemies. I pray for you. Let's keep talking, Philip. And uh, Pastor August B. Crees III wrote back, Lame brain idiot, you know what? You shall be the first candidate. You and all the stupid Judeo-Christians that worship the Jews, don't waste your time writing to me again. Is that a bomb? I shall have all further messages from you deleted off my server. Have a blankety-blank day, bonehead. What is that ticket? Ah. <laughs> oh, God. I'm glad it wasn't a bomb. It's just Pastor August B. Crees III. <laughs> oh, my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. I just can't stand it. What? A what? 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 What is going on tonight? And no, you didn't hear it. If you heard it, it was in your own mind. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Nasty, nasty.
Only 36 minutes into the broadcast, ladies and gentlemen, I'm already worn out. I don't know if I can keep this up. You know, I'm not used to this uh, high-level energy thing, but uh, there's just so much going on now. It just uh, makes a perfect atmosphere to do it. And I'm doing it. Oh, yes, I am. I'm doing it. Wild tonight. Really wild. Wild. Absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what we reported in the major story on our website has turned out to be at least partially confirmed by third-party sources. The uh, KLA, the Kosovo Liberation Army, Ain't all it's cracked up to be. In fact, we fixing to make William Jefferson Clinton wish he was never born. Don't go away. goodness. This, ladies and gentlemen, is from the London Times. From the London Times, March 24, 1999, Kosovo Crises, the KLA. KLA stands for Kosovo Liberation Army. Drugs, money linked to the Kosovo rebels from Roger Boys and Eski Wright in Bonn. The Kosovo Liberation Army, which has won the support of the West for its guerrilla struggle against the heavy armor of the Serbs, is a Marxist-led force funded by dubious sources, including drug money. That is the judgment of senior police officers across Europe. An investigation by the Times has established that police forces in three Western European countries, together with Europol, the European Police Authority, are separately investigating growing evidence that drug money is funding the KLA's leap from obscurity to power. The financing of the Kosovo guerrilla war poses critical questions, and it sorely tests claims to an ethical foreign policy. Should the West back a guerrilla army that appears to be partly financed by organized crime? Could the KLA's need for funds be fueling the heroin trade across Europe? The KLA has become an essential component of the Kosovo Peace Agreement. Without it, there would be no equal negotiating partner for the Belgrade government. In military terms, it is in no sense equal to the Serb forces, but it has grown from a theoretical notion to an often successful, very mobile, and very visible guerrilla grouping in a remarkably short time. Much of the money funding the KLA is believed to come from legitimate sources raised by the People's Movement of Kosovo, which is the political wing of the resistance movement. There are about 500,000 Kosovan Albanians in Western Europe who send money back home because it funds health care for their cousins. However, some of this cash is believed to be siphoned off for the military. 
As well as diverting charitable donations from exiled Kosovans, some of the KLA money is thought to come from drug dealing. Sweden is investigating suspicions of a KLA drug connection. We have intelligence leading us to believe that there could be a connection between drug money and the Kosovo Liberation Army, said Walter Kig, head of the Drug Enforcement Unit in the Swedish Police Intelligence Service. Supporting intelligence has come from other states. We have yet to find direct evidence, but our experience tells us that the channels for trading hard drugs are also used for weapons, said one Swiss police commander. An official in the Bavarian Interior Ministry also told the Times of a recent fundraising meeting involving some 200 Kosovans in southern Germany. At the end of the session, they raised Deutschmark 100,000, or about 40,000 pounds. This represents a huge sum for ordinary Kosovans and fuels speculation that apparently legitimate fundraising activities are used to launder dirty money. One Western intelligence report quoted by Berliner Zeitung says that Deutschmark 900 million has reached Kosovo since the guerrillas began operations and half the sum is said to be illegal drug money. In particular, European countries are investigating the Albanian connection, whether Kosovan Albanians living primarily in Germany and Switzerland are creaming off the profits from inner city heroin dealing and sending the cash to the KLA. Albania which plays a key role in channeling money to the Kosovans, is at the hub of Europe's drug trade. An intelligence report, which was prepared by Germany's federal criminal agency, concluded, Ethnic Albanians are now the most prominent group in the distribution of heroin in Western consumer countries. Europol, which is based in The Hague, is preparing a report for European Interior and Justice Ministers on a connection between the KLA and Albanian drug gangs. Police in the Czech Republic recently tracked down a Kosovo-Albanian drug dealer named Doboshi, who had escaped from a Norwegian prison where he was serving 12 years for heroin trading. A raid on Doboshi's apartment turned up documents linking him with arms purchases for the KLA. Police sources in Germany have made plain their suspicions. The sudden ascendancy of Kosovan Albanians in the heroin trade in Switzerland, Germany, and Scandinavia coincides with the sudden growth of the KLA from a ragamuffin peasant's army two years ago to a 30,000-strong force equipped with grenade launchers, anti-tank weapons, and AK-47s. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> Remember John last night? He's a spoiler. He always calls in uh, times when we're doing reports on things that will seriously hurt the New World Order and tries to inject something there that will screw us up. But he always gets tangled in his own bullshit lies and hypocrisy, which is what happened last night. He tried to uh, tell us that uh, Milosevic is a communist. The truth is, ladies and gentlemen, Yugoslavia was a communist nation headed by a communist named Marshal Tito, who, even though he opposed Joseph Stalin, was still a communist. Everybody in Yugoslavia was at one time a communist. When the Iron Curtain fell, when the Berlin Wall came down, all of a sudden you couldn't find a communist anywhere, including Milosevic. The government of, of, excuse me, of Yugoslavia is not a communist government. He's not a communist government. Milosevic, although he may be a thief, he may be a liar, he might be uh, heavy-handed, he might even be said by a lot of people to be a dictator. There were elections. There were, let me say that again, there were elections. And there are elections in Yugoslavia. And... Uh, any time that the people of Yugoslavia want him out of his position, believe me, he will go. <clears throat> now, I want to read to you a report prepared by Juan Pablo Cordoba Elias. It's called The Reform, U.S. Political Games on Kosovo and Metohia. And here's what he says. This was prepared March 4th, ladies and gentlemen. March 4th. 
1999. As in the big movies, it seems it's not hard to understand the action. Kosovo, Serbian province, Yugoslav, major republic, was for decades now, especially during last year, the battlefield of ethnic religious conflicts between two political factors, rebel Albanian groups, which represent the majority in the region, and Serbian military forces, which are the minority, just like I told you last night. Since the beginning of 90s, the rebels have considered that zone, the Republic of Kosovo, where they represent the majority of 2,100,000 citizens, and their goal is creation of an independent state. As a difference to that, Serbs are calling the same territory the autonomous province of Kosovo and Matohia, and are against the independence of that region. In order to comprehend the political essence of the conflict, one should keep in mind the fact that neither good nor evil is always complete. It's not a question of ordinary local conflicts or instability that they are provoking in Yugoslavia. It's about a real possibility of expanding the war beyond Yugoslav borders. In this conflict between ethnic groups and religious elements, the essential part have political games in the process, in which are also included NATO so-called contact group, France, Great Britain, Italy, Germany, and Russia, and one actor in the group that is acting for its own benefit, the United States of America. Involvement of the European and Asian powers in the conflict, failure of the peace negotiations on Middle East, suspicious, on-time catching of Kurdish leader Abdul Ozzalan, Expensive OUN silence, and finally, NATO and U.S. government using time and benefit to the doubt that there are also other actors and interests involved in the show whose scenario is being altered from day to day. And I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that is absolutely true. In 1389, Ottoman Turks occupied Kosovo, which was at the time a political center of Serbian Empire strategic bridge between Asia and Middle East in a place where the most significant churches and monasteries were located. To permit the independence of Kosovo in Serbian mind would mean not only to give up the religious obligation but also to abandon the task that originates from their entire cultural past. Kosovo represents a strategic zone for terrorism and drug trade. Now this, ladies and gentlemen, is where I must ask you to pay very, very close attention. Please, pay very close attention. Because everything that Juan Pablo Cordoba Elias says here coincides exactly with the research that we have done. Kosovo represents a strategic zone for terrorism and drug trade. Terrorists are trained in Albania, in Lejavino, and Cooks, as well as the military schools in the municipality of Bayram Kiri that borders on Yugoslavia. Now, I may not be pronouncing some of these names right, so if I'm not, please forgive me. It's also known that the training camps exist in Lebane near El Basan, Circa on the mountain, Dashti, and some other in Kosovo itself. For example, Prizren, but also outside Kosovo, as well as in Montenegro, Macedonia, and Sweden. From the ideological point of view, Albanian terroristic organizations arose from the military ultra-left wing. For example, the oldest movement, so-called National Liberation of Kosovo, originated from four previously separate secret organizations, National Liberation Movement, Marxian-Leninist Organization of Kosovo, Communist Marxian-Leninist Party of Albanians in Yugoslavia, and the National Red Front. It is well known that this terroristic internal structure was supported by Albanian communist leader Enver Hoxha, who died in 1985, and former Albanian President Sali Barisa. Most of the people recruited in the Balkans are conservative villagers, descendants of Balas, 
famous Albanian fascists, who together with Italians fought against the Serbs during World War II on the side of the Nazis. If we add to all this the fact that the terrorists are mostly Muslims, it seems that things are getting quite another dimension. Commanding center of so-called Kosovo Liberation Army, or the KLA, is consisted of military and police forces that self-proclaimed Republic of Kosovo tried to create until 1992 as its own constitutional forces. Both organizations, the National Kosovo Liberation Movement and Liberation Army, are typical terroristic organizations by their organized structure with leaders outside Kosovo and Metohija. It is considered that there are around 6,000 trained terrorists on Kosovo and Metohija, and that 3,000 more are on the training courses in Albania, Turkey, and the western part of Germany. The intelligence center of the Liberation Army, located somewhere in the region near Pristina, is not only in charge of Kosovo and Metohija, but also all the places in former Yugoslavia inhabited by Albanians. Among the Albanian terrorists are also foreign mercenaries from Bosnia and Herzegovina, um, Herzegovina, Albania, Pakistan, Iran, Afghanistan, Egypt, Malaysia, and other Islamic countries. Muslims with radical determination are supporting Albanian terroristic machinery, not only through participation in their terroristic activities, but also supplying them with arms and offering appropriate training. Among terrorist instructors, there are also Turks and Chechens. From their side, Iran as well as the Sudan are delivering arms. Terrorist organizations are following such a model of warfare whose political goal is succession, and which, as an Islamic factor, applies the famous Hamas tactic, carefully planned terrorist attacks. It's not by accident that Drenica and the region of Metohija were chosen for the terrorist center, regarding the fact that the largest part of Metohija borders on Albania, where the first and strongest logistic support to their cause is expected. In the beginning of February this year, the Italian press has discovered that the heroin market in Lombardy is controlled by Kosovo Albanians. Those smugglers are not laundering money, but directly transferring it to the KLA, the Kosovo Liberation Army, in Kosovo and Metohija, and partly to Switzerland in order to finance arming the KLA. During 1998, the police in charge of the struggle against narcotics from Genoa and Hungary has been warning that Albanians are controlling 80% of the heroin market in their countries. Last year, in the Czech Republic, the police broke up one Albanian gang smuggling narcotics, arresting 16 persons who had 40,000 hidden doses of heroin, around 30,000 DEM worth. I don't know what that means. A DM is Deutschmark. I don't know what DEM is. Russian statements of support to Milosevic are being ignored, while at the same time, Contact Group admits that NATO has about 400 battle airplanes ready, including eight British bombers, B-52, and 12 Italian F-117. In reality, the entire NATO troops are including 260 American airplanes, while four battleships with cruising rackets, Tomahawk, cruising rockets or, or cruise rockets uh, of the Tomahawk type are also from the United States of America. Now remember, folks, this was published on March the 4th, before the fighting began, before the unprovoked uh, attack by NATO upon the sovereign nation of Yugoslavia began. He continues, Within all that, what is noticeable is that a military disposing is underway, and somebody will have to pay for it one day. The basic problem regarding Cosmet Albanians, Albanians is that unacceptable conditions are being set. NATO military disposing in this zone in possibility of establishing a transitional period with a referendum on eventual independence after three years as a goal. Possibility of foreign intervention, whether NATO or the United States of America, would only lead to cohesion of Serbian nationalism. For those who doubt all that, it should be enough to mention wars in Croatia, 
Bosnia and Herzegovina, and the siege of Sarajevo. Failure of the discussion in, Rambo, in uh, Rambouillet, France, is an introduction to the new migration wave, which benefits to regional disintegration as well as to stimulating xenophobic elements present in the conflict. Europe is one more time showing its incapability, as in the question of unity and regional balance within its own zone of influence, as in the relation to the creation of mutual foreign policy in accordance to the interests of the continent. Besides that, it is obvious that nobody is considering appropriate the consequences that would come from the support to independence of Kosovo that would be oxygen for internal extremism and project of great Albania. That is the new international order with, with, within which Kosovo factor is exclusively the insert in the film announced by the fall of socialist uh, project and for the absent-minded shown this year, 1999, for the first time. Very good report. Now, I'll read you what we had discovered in our research and had posted as the lead story on our website on the Internet, harvest-trust.org. And here it is. Kosovo Liberation Army Marxist Terrorist Organization. You know what I'm going to do? We're going to take a little break here, and I'm going to read this to you after the top of the hour station break so that I don't forget about it for 30 minutes like I did last night. So, stay tuned, folks. What you're going to learn tonight is amazing. And then, we'll open the phone. <laughs> so, uh, have fun. Remember I told you folks you'd be amazed to know who listens to this broadcast? Well, today I heard several high diplomats, representatives of foreign countries, and representatives of the Serbians in Yugoslavia use almost word for word what I said on this broadcast last night on CNN Today. You're listening to WBCQ, Monticello, Maine, USA. This is the Hour of the Time, and I'm William Cooper. Thank you. 
By the way, ladies and gentlemen, in case you're curious, all the music you're hearing tonight was made especially for this broadcast only by the brothers and sisters of Rebellion, a very intelligent and aware black group. Black group. A black group. I love to say that. All you racists out there, eat your hearts out. They know more than you about what's happening. They're not fools. They didn't fall into the deception of pitting us against each other. And they're helping to win this fight. Good music. Good message. Hope you're listening to it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> here we go. Uh, no, baby. No, go back. I'll see you in a little bit, okay? Thank you. Sorry, had a little visitor. Kosovo Liberation Army, Marxist terrorist organization. This is the story that I wrote and posted as the lead story on our website, harvest-trust.org. Veritas News Service, exclusive. Interpol sources have informed us that the Kosovo Liberation Army, KLA, is a Marxist communist-led terrorist guerrilla force that is funded by dubious sources, including drug money. Until recently, the KLA was listed by the United States Justice Department as a Marxist terrorist organization. Over the last two years, the KLA has grown from a small group of terrorist guerrillas into a force of over 30,000 men equipped with the weapons of a modern army. Confidential sources within the United States intelligence community inform us that the KLA was formed, funded, and supplied by Central Intelligence Agency operations with the goal of further destabilizing the region in order to destroy the legitimate government of Yugoslavia. 
The ultimate goal of the CIA operation is to provide a European shock test for the new world police force role of United States military forces over sovereign nations, as outlined by General Charles C. Krulak, Commandant of the Marine Corps, when he admitted the United States military's role as the world police force during his fiscal year 1999 budget testimony to the Defense Subcommittee of the Senate Appropriations Committee on March 11, 1999. Here is the damning admission in his own words, and I quote, There is a direct and undeniable link between our strong and virile economy and the stability of the world in which we trade. The Quadrennial Defense Review, mandated by Congress, validated the unique effectiveness of naval forces in contributing to crises prevention and crises resolution to promoting that stable world. The National Defense Panel provided an independent assessment. Once again, naval forces with our ability to stand off a potential hotspot for indefinite periods of time, listen to this carefully, with no issues of sovereignty, no issues of basing rights, and with no host nation support agreements required of any kind, was validated as one of our nation's most useful tools for maintaining world stability. Now let me read to you that last sentence once again. Here's what he said, and I quote, Once again, Naval forces, with our ability to stand off a potential hotspot for indefinite periods of time, with no issues of sovereignty, no issues of basing rights, and with no host nation support agreements required of any kind, was validated as one of our nation's most useful tools for maintaining world stability. End quote. Ladies and gentlemen, the rule of law has been overturned. The world is now subject to the law of the jungle. The biggest monkey with the biggest rock makes the rules. The NATO attack upon Yugoslavia is the most serious of breaches of international law. The fact that President William Jefferson Clinton took control. Listen to me carefully. The fact that President William Jefferson Clinton took control of a United Nations force, NATO, in violation of both the United Nations and the NATO charters, and in direct violation of the restrictions upon the executive branch of the United States government, exerting the will of the United States to compel a blatant act of war without provocation upon a sovereign nation, tells us that world government is only a heartbeat away. American military personnel are being used, sacrificed, upon the altar of a new world totalitarian order. President William Jefferson Clinton may become the first king of the world, and Washington, D.C. may become the capital of world government. Freedom of music! Freedom of expression. Freedom for all. You can't get away with it. You can't get away with it. You can't get away with it. To be. It's a hell of a time, cause the federal's in charge To all bad brothers of this state They thought you should be running your cattle number brand and name That they hunt every child for this suicide game No freedom for one, no freedom at all Just torch all the music in the national hall Just burn every culture on top of my wall the sticks, the clubs, and the neighbors Seems like a beat in the eyes of a hell of The feds, the bureau, and the hard-ass blue Are breaking it down on the bad brother crew
Josh, Dr. Ferris, Lawrence, and now many other ball busters. The music is the music, now the music is mine. You can't take the music out of all boys, man. Get your hands, bring it down, cause I can't see both hands. Look into my eyes and you see I'm not choking. I'm a real life person that you can't control. Cause inside of me, there's a living soul. A human being, person with a body of a man. A real blood person that you can't come in. Not a clone like you, some robotics fool. We live in the city and we know the rules. are back. And uh, what we're going to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is, uh, as I promised, we're going to uh, open the phones, as if you haven't guessed. We are going to open the phones, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to hear what you have to say. So, get ready. It's, uh, it's coming. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello? Hello? He left. Chicken plugger. 520-333-4578 is the number. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, Bill. I just want to tell you that I called all my congressmen and senators and told them exactly what I knew about the Kosovo's and the heroin trafficking and the Osama bin Laden. Well, well, let me interrupt you for a minute. Could you please speak a lot louder? And could I, could I, remi- wait, 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 wait a minute. And could I remind everybody in the listening audience when you call, please put that phone right in front of your mouth and talk real loud. It will help an awful lot. Okay. Go ahead. So, how about this? That's much yeah, better. I, I uh, spent the day calling all the congressmen in my area, plus the, uh, I live in Los 
Angeles, plus my two senators, and I kept asking the same question. The United States supports the KLA heroin narco trafficking ring and Osama bin Laden now after we just uh, sent missiles over to Pakistan for to try and get Osama bin Laden. Now we're on the same team. And the stunning silence was just, I mean, it was pretty funny. They didn't even want to hear it. They didn't want to talk about it. They didn't want to know about it. That, that's right. They don't want to know about it, and they don't want to talk about it because they know it's damn true. Right. So now what's Clinton now? Now we're the narco traffickers of the world, I guess. And I guess support, we support the, the, the uh, most dangerous man in the world, Osama bin Laden. That's our national policy now. Thanks, Bill. You're welcome. All right. Clinton, Clinton's in big trouble because I'm fixing to succeed from the union. I'm going to succeed from the union is what I'm going to do. And if he doesn't back me up, then we're going to war. I mean, that's just all there is. To. I'm already at war with those scum-sucking, puke-faced pigs anyway. Good evening. You're on the air. Bill, I just called you. Talk louder. I hug, I'm sorry I hung up. I, I thought you said call back a minute after the music. So. No, I said hold on until the music quits. Well, Go ahead. You know, this whole thing that he's got going on over there yeah. is only going to result in the expansion of, uh, of U.S. law enforcement in this country because of some perceived threat or potential threat. I can barely hear you. You've got to talk louder. Some potential threat from... Uh, do you know what louder means? It means louder than what you're talking. Can you do that? Turn the radio down. What are you... Uh, forget it. What are you doing with your radio on? You're not supposed to have your radio on when you call any talk show. And that's absolutely... 520-333-4578 is the number. And it's somebody else's turn because I just dumped him right off. I mean, I just can't handle that. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, hey, Bill. i got a great idea here. What's that? This guy's violating just about every law in the book. Why don't they send a couple Blue Berets down there to Washington and grab this global faction leader, drag him up there, and put him in front of an international war crimes tribunal? He should, because that's exactly what he's done. He and, and why everybody in the world is not saying anything about it, I don't know, because that's a blatant, overt act of war against a sovereign nation, unprovoked. Well, I think that's standard White House policy these days, to be supporting drug pushers and stuff. Well, you, you have to understand that the New World Order is going to be totalitarian and socialist. Yeah. Now, yeah. Milosevic doesn't fit into that. He's bucking it. Yeah. He stands for Serbian nationality. And like the, 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 the Abraham Lincoln of, uh, of Europe. Yeah, the Kosovans, on the other hand, are Marxist, socialist, terrorists trying to split up Yugoslavia so that there can't be a nationalist state in Europe opposing the New World Order. That's what this is all about. It's about establishing the superiority and precedent that the United States military services can act as the world police force against all international law, against all law, as a matter of fact. They've thrown the law out the window. Well, and and make anybody do whatever whatever they want to do. They can make anybody do whatever they want to do simply by holding a gun to their head. <laughs> That's what it's all about. They're I'd cheap. Rather die. They're cheap two-bit thugs, and I'd rather die too. Well, when I was 15 years old, I damn near experienced death, and I'll tell you what, it's not too bad. Well, I wouldn't argue with you at all on that I'd point. Go through that than, than being enslaved by these nitwits. Sure. Have a good one, Bill. Thanks a lot for your call. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight is the number. Uh, you've heard an awful lot tonight, folks, so you've got a lot to talk about. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, uh, Bill. This is Frank from PA. Frank, talk louder. Why do I have to keep Can telling you? Can you hear me now? Is that better? Talk louder, Frank. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with my phone. My phone must be screwed up or something. I don't know. No, it's not your phone. You have not raised your voice yet. Okay. Some people talk low. And when you say talk louder, they don't know what that means. <laughs> and they never raise their voice. Talk louder. I noticed on the news tonight, I was watching it, uh, you know, the Communist News Network. Uh huh. And uh, they had said something, actually, with Tom Brokaw, and he had said something about in his, uh, while well, he was reporting on this, about that uh, the NATO forces have used some type of highly top secret new weaponry uh, that was supposed to knock out power grids so that uh, 
in the event that the uh, Serbians would launch uh, air to uh, ground air missiles, that it would uh, uh, disrupt their uh, their uh, tracking. That could be information warfare or just plain propaganda. Yeah, uh, or, 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 they could be using an, an EMP. Right. That's what I was thinking, but... And that's, and that's not some kind of secret weapon everybody knows about. But that's what they said. You know, you know how they are, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, mean, I, just, I just think it's totally awful, and I, I, just, I just don't believe, you know, we have any right at all to be over there because it is a sovereign nation. I mean, it's going to come down to innocent blood being shed of our own troops as well as of neighboring people. Yes, that's true. And uh, it's a shame. It's a real shame, and I just I abhor it. And, uh, I just want to say this: if the if Yugoslavia is listening, I support you 100. percent That's the way I feel. I do not support the NATO forces at all. That's a not 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 a United States force, even though there are United States military there. They're acting in behalf of a new world totalitarian socialist government that is act absolutely unlawful, unconstitutional, and is treasonous. Treasonous. So true, Bill. So true. I agree. Well, I just wanted to give you my two cents, and uh, I'll let somebody else get on. Thank you. God bless you. Not only that, I won't support Nazis. I won't pull the Nuremberg thing. Oh, I've got to support the troops because... You know, they're our boys, and whether they're doing right or wrong, got to support them, you know, like all the Nazis in Congress did. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi again, Bill. Hello. Um, about John from Kentucky? Yeah. Yeah, we've talked about him before. He's actually Joe from Rocky River, Ohio. He's also Frank from Franklin, Indiana. Yeah. He's, he's all kinds of names. He's On the Internet, he's Malleus Maleficarum. Oh, yeah, I recognize, every time he comes on, I recognize his voice instantly, and I'm just infinitely curious as to what kind of bullshit he's going to try to pull. So I let him talk for a while until he gets himself in trouble, and then I spring a trap and, and expose him for what he is, and then let him go home and cry. Yeah, he's a, he's a regular caller to that Radio Baptist, like I was telling you about. Uh, as a matter of fact, yesterday I happened to tune into that show. He's called a spoiler. That's what you call it in intelligence circles. It's somebody who is appointed to uh, call different radio shows and uh, spoil whatever point uh, the radio show or whatever topic the radio show is trying to, uh, to discuss. Now, with most ignorant radio show hosts who never do any research and a lot of uh, their guests who aren't prepared for such an attack, it works. But it never works on this broadcast because I know what I'm talking about. Well, on this show that he calls regularly, though, not your show, the, the show that I'm talking about, the local show. Mm -hmm. uh, he generally toes the line of the, the, you know, the, the thought of the day. Like, for instance, yesterday they were going to have Larry Nichols on as a guest. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, naturally, he was, you know, really bad-mouthing Clinton about, you know, how he's like an antichrist and all that fun stuff. You know, because after all, it is Radio Baptist. And, uh... uh then he switches stream. It switches uh, in midstream, right? Oh no, not really. He he toes the line on this show. Uh, you know, so th that's what gets you wondering about this guy. Uh, well, that, that that's totally against his nature because what he does is he start off turn towing the line, and you might think he's towing the line, but toward the end he'll switch horses in midstream and make a point that just totally destroys uh, or tries to destroy if he's talking to somebody that doesn't know how to counteract it. Whatever the whatever they're trying to do on that show, I've listened to him do it all over the place. Not just here. Yeah. I mean, he does it all on talk shows all over the country. I was rather uh, I wasn't surprised at seeing that in the uh, London Times this morning either. Um, I was. I was absolutely amazed that, that any that any uh, uh, establishment media uh, newspaper printed that story because it goes against the New World Order, and it goes directly against. Uh, the, the Clinton, and he's the big power right now in the world. Well, do you think that has something to do with the, with the Brits trying to take control over there? 
they're, they're waiting for Bill Clinton to stumble so that they could uh, pick up a few uh, uh, tips, so to speak. Have you been paying attention to what's happening in the world? England is a third world nation now. They have no power. They're, well, they're, they're well, nobody. They're a socialist nation. They're already part of the New World Order. But, but you know as well as I do, though, that the third way is like the, the new buzzword among political circles, especially in Europe. It may be, but that doesn't negate the fact that England is a third world power. They don't have a military that can act as a world police force. They don't have the power anymore. They're a third world socialist nation with a very discontented poor population that are taxed to death. And that's the truth. Stop stop listening to all these people. Well, just stop listening to all these people that tell you that Britain is a great big power. They're not anymore. No, I don't I don't believe they are either, but but, but they still hold some sway in the world to some degree. No, they don't. They don't hold any sway at all. If they did, they'd be calling the shots and not Clinton. Well, well, what about some of the teachings of the mystery schools, though? What about them? Well, the, don't a lot of them uh, come from there and Cecil Rhodes and all that fun stuff? A lot of them do, but okay. it does. Well, but it, 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 but it, they it, were but they were all started when England was an empire. England, listen to me carefully. Listen to me very carefully. England is a third world, third rate power. And America picked up the mantle. You better believe it. Okay. Okay, just checking in and telling you about uh, Joe from Rocky River, Ohio. Okay. Have a good one. Thank you. Yeah, folks, forget all this stuff that England is ruling the world and pulling the strings. That's bullshit. England is a third-rate, third-world power with a taxed-to-death population and a socialist system. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, hi, Bill. Hi. Uh, Richard from California. Hi, Richard. It looks like uh, they violated uh, every tenet uh, in the art of war by Sun Tzu in this uh, particular exercise they're doing. Boy, they sure did that, didn't they? <laughs> they definitely did. You, you wonder whether they're just stupid or just plain evil and stupid together. Well, I don't think they're stupid. I would not make that mistake. Clinton, by himself, might be. But, you see, Clinton's not really calling all these shots. That's being done from the people who pull Clinton's strings. I'm quite certain of that myself. Uh, in fact, he looks so pathetic, you know, you just wonder who's pulling his strings. Uh, well, I think we've got an idea who's pulling them, but... Uh, yeah, we certainly do. Uh, yeah. I had uh, recently ran across a book, uh, The Goebbels Diaries from World War II. Remember the Nazi propaganda minister? Yes, I do. In Goebbels Diaries, the man was actually lamenting the fact that the German people, that he had to use better propaganda than the American people, because the American people, he was lamenting the fact that he had to use better propaganda with the Germans than the Americans did. Because the Americans swallowed it so easily. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I couldn't believe it. You know, here's a propaganda minister that everybody's been ridiculing for the past 50 years, you know? You know, years ago, I couldn't believe it either, but nowadays, I know absolutely for a fact that it's true. I mean, it's just absolutely. It's, it's incredible. Well, it's Republic, Bill. Keep thank, up the good work. Thank you. Bye. 520-333-4578 is the number. And it's your turn, whoever you happen to be, to uh, call and give us your information, our opinion, our comments, our ravings, our uh, opposition, or whatever it is you want to do. And remember the rules, as long as you do it politely, and intelligently, you can do it. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, Bill. Yes, sir. What's happening is uh, is criminal. Yes, I agree with that. And I, and I don't know what Americans think they can do about it. Because everybody believes we're fighting this like the one-man war. If you speak up, you do nothing. Well, I don't understand that. Because you're only one voice out there in the wilderness, and you're doing nothing. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Now, that doesn't, that, that doesn't wash, because I'm only one voice, and look what I've done. You've done a great thing. Well, so can anybody. I understand that. And you may be only doing it with two or three people, but if you're only doing it with two or three people, and that's all you're able to reach, 
That's a great accomplishment. I agree. You should never feel that way. But that we can't vote these people out of that. We can't tell them that they got... I've been telling you for many, many years that a political solution is beyond our capability at this time. It's already escaped us. There's only one solution. I agree. But when do we reach the point that we do that? Well, that depends. That, and I don't expect you to answer. We mm -hmm. just all have to determine that ourselves. That's right. Uh, but it's there, there will come a day when, when there will be an overload, and, and Americans, the ones that are willing to fight for freedom, will stand up and do what needs to be done. I believe that's true. And honest to God, I hope I'm there when it happens. Me too. It's happening right now. Me too, although um, I'm, I'm one of the main targets to be taken out, like, immediately. <laughs> when, when, you're, when you're named as the most dangerous radio host in America by the president, then the first thing they want to do is eliminate my uh, capability to influence people. And so when it starts, uh, if I can't get away from here quick enough, then uh, you'll have to do it without me. There's going to be a lot of us like that. Yes, I'm, I have no doubt at all about that. There is a target list. And they won't discriminate when it comes to that. Yes, they will. They'll hit the leaders first. Always. They will always hit the leaders first. Based upon the, uh, the known, uh, uh, the known uh, value that uh, a mob without leaders is, is ineffective and, uh, and uh, directionless and easily conquered. Evaluated on a potential threat and be taken out in that order. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's actually the new SS of the world. Absolutely. These people are Nazis. Absolutely. There's Absolutely. no Absolutely. doubt about it. They are Nazis. And it, and it just well, kills me to see Jews in this Nazi New World Order helping to bring it to pass. That's because they can't, they can't define the difference. They can't discern the difference between right and wrong and what's really happening here. They don't have a clear line. Yeah. So, so their values, they, have, they, don't have, they haven't developed the critical thinking that it requires to discern the difference. No, and for the first time in their whole history, they're included as a partner, as least, at least those that, that, that have been brought up into leadership positions, so they don't understand that in the long run, uh, it's not just Christianity that's scheduled for extinction, it's all existing religions, including Orthodox Judaism. Until you bow down and worship the beast, which is the government. Well, it's, it's not really the government. It's the concept that man is God and there is no God before man, <laughs> which ultimately turns out to be the government. Yes. Um, my, I guess the point that I really wanted to call about was if, if the United Nations, this is a conditioning treatment, they're conditioning the United Nations to accept the fact that if a sovereign nation anywhere on this globe decides that they want to resist the will of the United Nations, and the rest of the democratic nations around them, which means that mob rules, then if they want to resist, they must pay the penalty of the other voting public voting their way into their pocket and telling them what they want to do. Yeah, well, that's right. Now, when they do that, that one nation stands alone. If they vote their way in there on a civil war, or on the grounds of or stopping the civil conflict, which is totally within the bounds of that nation. Not in the New World Order. It won't be allowed. In fact, there won't... What happens when, and if, not, well, I shouldn't say if, but when, we have one here. And the only way that they can quell that is to pull as many troops in from as many nations of the United Nations into this state, in this nation, to stop that conflict or to quell it. Well, I'd say we're going to have that one... We're going to have one hell of a fight. That's what's going to happen. That's the end result of the philosophy that they're perpetrating on us now. That's the end result of what they're trying to tell us. Sure it is. That we, everyone is subject not to their sovereign nation's law, but to the law of some higher authority. The, the New World Order. Influence. The world government. The world police force. It to all natural law. Yes, it is. We won't tolerate that. And in this nation, they're going to, they're going to do this and they're going to... Instituted the, the uh, euro dollar, and they're going to use 
that economy to threaten the United States or the American economy to topple our government. Well, it won't be to topple our government. What they'll do is they'll topple our financial system and bring us in line. No, no well, you're, you're wrong about but that. This whole, you, I, I believe that this whole... Hold it, hold it, hold it. When you're talking to me on my show, you got to let me talk. I'm sorry, Bill. I apologize. You're, but you're wrong in one respect. It's not to topple the United States government. The United States government is leading the charge to form world government. And that's what they all want. They're not going to stop that. Absolutely. The goal is to eliminate the middle class with a financial collapse. And then most people, having been so used to having so much in this country, will get down on their knees and beg for any kind of relief and will do anything that they're told in order to get it. Sure, they can eat bread for a while. Yeah. They're wimps. They're cowards. They've had it too good for too long. And they don't even know how to stand up and say no. That's right. No, I agree. But other than that one point, you're absolutely right in what you've said. But the target is not the United States government. The United States government is leading the charge toward the formation of the world government. And it take, take control of our financial systems and force us into a national ID card. In 30 days, they could give us a, uh, a notice that would say, uh, you have 30 days amnesty to turn your guns in. You know, you've got to talk a lot louder. I can barely hear you. You have 30 days amnesty to turn your guns in, or you have 30 days amnesty to come down to the Secretary of State and have your, your driver license with your retina scan and, and, a, and a barcoded picture and everything else. Yeah, but you're getting way ahead of there. You know, this is all hypothetical. We, we know it's probably what's going to happen, but, uh, you know. It's all possible. It's all possible, but let's stick with what we know for right now. Well, under the state of emergency, that he could declare... There isn't any state of emergency. ...terrorist threat that, that came out of the, the, the Serbian and uh, uh, Kosovo uh, conflict, he could utilize the emergency law that he's already instituted through uh, presidential order and emergency or executive orders. It's all unconstitutional. It's not law. Anything that's unconstitutional is not law. It's color of law. They're not going to enforce it because they do it every day. Guys, hey, it's not for them to enforce. It's for the American people to enforce. It's our job to make sure the Constitution is followed. Not the government's job because the government will always try to exceed their limitations. So the That's the nature of government. We get to resist their attempted enforcement of a constitutional law. Of an unconstitutional law. Well, that's exactly... That's what we should have been doing all along. We wouldn't be in this situation if we did. It's our duty. We're bound by that. And if we, we don't do it, then we acquiesce. That's exactly right. You consent by not doing anything. Yeah. Good evening, Bill. Thanks for calling. Bye. 520-333-4578 is the number. Yeah, you know, if they can do this to the Yugoslavians... If they can do what they're doing to the Serbs, they can do it to us. And they will. I guarantee it. Guarantee. No doubt whatsoever, ladies and gentlemen. You see, whatever they can do to somebody else, they can do to us. And if we helped do it to somebody else, you know, we haven't got much... <laughs> We can't complain much when they come to do it to us, can we? At least, uh, you know, that's the uh, that's the way I see it for right now. And I think that a lot of people better wake up really quick and better understand what's going on. Stand up! Stand up! Stand up! Get off your butt! Hold the line. Hey. Stand up, stand up, stand up, get off your butt. Stand up, stand up, stand up, get off your butt. Stand up, stand up, stand up, get off your butt. Stand up, stand up, stand up, get off your butt. Stand up, stand up, stand up, get off your butt. Stand up,
Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Bill. This is Dennis down here in Carolina. Hi, Dennis. Uh, I just want to give a little personal report on this uh, my Dr. Wallach situation. Go ahead. Okay. Well, right now, I've got gray hairs, but they have brown roots. Oh, well, that's great. And I feel stronger every day. And these people need to get, first they help is get their health together. Mm-hmm. Then that's going to help get their minds together. That's true. Because the stronger you are, the stronger you can hold on to the truth. Truer words were never spoken. I just want to give you a brief little report from me tonight. And uh, I, I enjoyed this week on the radio with you. Well, thank you. It has been super. <laughs> Well, I'm not so sure if I would enjoy listening to all this terrible stuff. Uh, I know there's been some terrible, terrible things happening. But there's a lot of people, it seems like the involvement is, is coming up uh, more than I've seen before. I, I've got feelings that I have. Well, I'll tell you this, the volume of mail coming in tells me that if we haven't already got our 10 million audience back, we're getting it back very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. The The volume of mail has just increased just uh, tremendously. Uh, and it's almost back up to the old uh, levels that we had when we had a 10 million uh, listening audience. And uh, I think it'll go beyond that because I think people are, are much more aware and awake today than they ever were when we were trying to stir them before. So we'll see. Thank you. Okay, good night. Good night. And for those of you who think that the majority of the American people are on the side of uh, President Clinton in this NATO attack on, on Yugoslavia, boy, if you've been listening to the talk radio shows across this country, uh, you'll find that uh, nothing is farther from the truth. I've, I've been tuning in around the dial and listening to some of the talk shows, and it's just incredible. I haven't, I haven't heard anybody who supports what he's doing yet. There may be some out there, but they're not calling talk radio. At least uh, not the talk radio broadcasts that uh, I've been listening to. 520-333-4578 is the number. Don't forget, folks, we're having our annual sale right now. Everything that's on tape, audio or video, uh, is 40% off. Everything that's uh, book is 25% off. And uh, back issues of Veritas are $5 a piece instead of the normal eight. So, if you've, uh, and that goes for the Mystery Babylon set, too. Mystery Babylon set for members is regularly $260. It's on sale now for $156. That's over $100 off. For non-members, it's $290. Now it's $174. That's way over $100 off. So if you ever wanted to get the Mystery Babylon series that we did so that you'll understand what's going on, uh, get it now because uh, you, you're just not going to find a better price at any time. And don't forget, you know, we skipped last year entirely. And we might skip. In fact, we might not even be around for next year. So uh, if you've been wanting to get that series... I strongly suggest uh, that you do it, and that you do it now while you've got a chance to get it at such a reduced rate. If you figure out the price per tape, folks, uh, if you purchase the tapes one at a time, uh, you couldn't even, uh, you, you, you know, it would take you twice as much as the regular price. Good evening. You're on the air. I'm doing fine. Can you talk louder, please? Uh, yes, sir. Is this better? That's a little better, yeah. Hey, Bill, um, aside from Kosovo, uh, I wanted to talk about something you talked about last night, if I may. That was the aerial spray. We weren't talking about aerial spray. We were talking about jet contrails. Okay. May I discuss that tonight? What? Well, we're on no, the... No, no, wait a minute. What do you want to discuss tonight? Well, I kind of wanted to share my observations on that. 
Uh, on what? Contrails or spraying? That's two different things. Well, something that I noticed, what I, I noticed one jet that didn't seem to really have be putting out a significant amount. And another, significant amount of what? You have to explain yourself. What are you on, talking about? Contrail. Okay. Another uh, jet that seemed to be putting out a large amount. That's because they may be flying at different altitudes. You have to understand that the temperature is not the same at every altitude. Neither is the wind direction, neither is the wind speed, neither is the amount of humidity in the atmosphere. Would the, would the increase in air traffic and the uh, uh, unusual patterns be significant? Yes, certainly it would. Well, that was one of the other observations that I had. As it's well. because there's more population, more airplanes in the air, and more air travelers than ever before in history. There's a bigger population. There's more airplanes up there, not just civilian airplanes, but private airplanes, military airplanes, every kind of airplane you can think of. Okay, even when one is not in, in, in an area that is subject, subjected to uh, uh, usual flight traffic? Military are not subjected to usual flight traffic. They fly everywhere. And so do private planes, including Learjets. They may be. You know, I'm, not, I'm not arguing with you on any of this stuff. I'm just saying that the average person doesn't know enough about anything to believe any of the crap that's flying around, especially when none of it is proven. Okay. Not one single bit of it is proven. They've worked the population into hysteria based upon what people say. Not anything is proven. There is no analysis of anything. There is no doctor's uh, a sworn statement that people are coming in sick from, from contrails from airplanes or from spraying or anything else. Would it be significant if there seemed to be in, in a small community uh, a rather, um, uh, I shouldn't say necessarily sudden, but a recurring pattern of, of onset of illnesses? Not unless you can tie it to something. Uh, how, how do you know it's not your dog that's causing the illnesses? Well, uh, I wasn't necessarily thinking of me so much as just in, in other... You, do you live in the community? Yes. How do you know it's not your dog causing all the illnesses? I mean, why would you pin it on something that you see in the sky? Well, how do you know it's not some guy that went to Chicago and got sick and came back and kissed about uh, a whole bunch of girls over a, a two-week period who went and kissed some other people and just spread it throughout the whole community? Why? Why in your wildest dreams, with no supporting evidence or facts whatsoever, would you look up in the sky and say, that's what's doing it? Well, I wasn't necessarily. I was having... That's exactly what you want to do. See what I mean? You want you want to blame it on the contrails. Do you have any proof the contrails have done anything to anybody ever? No. Then why in the world do you even bring it up? Because I find it an interesting coincidence. And, uh, and oh, gee, you find that an interesting there are coincidence? Lot of things in this, in this but gee, that, but there's stars in the sky. How come the stars didn't do it? No, that's not how you come to the truth. That's how you come with hysterical, emotional, irrational rumors that have absolutely no basis in fact whatsoever. But, Bill, haven't you basically told us for all these years to seek out the truth? But you're not doing that. Well, I, I, you're seeing some people who are sick. You're, lucky, you're looking up in the sky when a plane passes over, and you're saying, that's what made them sick. No, and that, no, that has nothing to do with seeking the truth. That has to do with superstition. I know exactly what you're trying to say, and you can't rationalize it with me. It's bullshit. Okay. Absolute bullshit. 
Now, if you can come to me with some proof, factual, real proof, I'll get on this broadcast and I'll reveal it to the world. But until then, don't come to me with all this crap. You know, I, there's a whole bunch of people sick in my community. I looked up, saw some planes flying over there with some contrails, and I just know that's what did it. Well, that's insanity. It's got to be discarded because there is no factual evidence, proof, even anything that remotely connects the two at all. All right. Thank you, Bill. It's absolute hysteria. Thank you. Thank you for calling. And I hope you don't go off and get all bent out of shape. I, you know, I got to tell you the truth. And that's the truth. You come to me and say, hey, there's 20 people got sick this month in town. And I saw contrails all in the sky. So that must be what's doing it. I mean, that's, you know, ancient man used to do the same thing. Gee, everybody in the cave got sick this winter. And, uh, you know, a, a comet went across the sky. So we know that if the comet comes back, everybody's going to get sick. Same thing. Same exact, same thing. Bullshit. It does not compute, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. You're on the air. Bill. Yes, ma'am. Mary Rutten. This is Mary from Ohio. Hi, Mary. I have come to a conclusion. I'm 65 years old. Uh-huh. That the contrails is used toilet paper and tan packs. What? Uh, don't you think that's a good, I mean, since everything else is going haywire? Wait, wait a minute. I, don't, I, I didn't hear what you said. The, the trails coming out of the plane. Yeah. I've come to the conclusion that it's used toilet paper and tampax. Well, you know what? You're probably absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I just, you know. You know, that's, pro that's probably exactly what it is. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, and it's the same thing. I, you know, I, I appreciate your humor. It's very good because that's... So, you know, I think today we need some. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly... That's the, all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. It's exactly the same logic. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you for that call. Uh, but I don't really need to laugh anymore. I mean, laughing the first half of this broadcast really um, <clears throat> puts some serious hurt on my chest muscles, <laughs> if you don't mind. 520-333-4578. Yes, yeah, some people were tremendously embarrassed by our revelation that the contrails are nothing more than ice crystals in the air. And I today I found out why. I found out why Clayton Douglas was so upset and why he called me trying to get me to reverse my position on this. Today I got a copy of his magazine, The New American, and guess what the headline cover story is? It's all about how the contrails are killing us. So I imagine that Clayton is pretty embarrassed. Uh, I feel for him. I like him. He is my friend. He's done some wonderful things. Uh, but I'm sorry, Clayton, I cannot support this. And if you're embarrassed, the best thing that you can do is just say, hey, I was embarrassed and, you know, I screwed up and I'm sorry. But don't, you know, unless you've got some proof, don't call me and try to get me to uh, change my position based upon the fact that you don't want to be embarrassed. Does not work. Uh, does not ever work with me. All I want to hear is facts. Facts. See, I get burnt too many times, folks. I know all about this rumor crap that passes from hand to hand. I know what's going on out there, and by God, I don't want to be a part of it. I want to save this nation, not help bury it. I want to educate people, not keep them in a state of ignorance. I want to appeal to reason, not emotion. I want to get us back on track, not sidetracked. And if you want to fault me for that, if you want to call me names, if you want to, uh, whatever you want to do, I don't care. I have never cared. The only judgment that, I, that concerns me is God's judgment. 
That's it. It's the only judgment I care about. I've gotten a lot of letter and phone calls. There's been some banner on the Internet about the uh, broadcast that I did where I simply asked some questions. You know, here's what Jesus said. Here's what the Bible said. Here's what your preacher says. Which one is lying? All of a sudden, now, the word is going around that I'm not a Christian. I can't be a Christian anymore because I ask some simple questions. And apparently, if I think that Jesus told the truth, there must be something wrong with me. Can you imagine that? <laughs> we'll see what's wrong with who when we meet the man. And, uh, you know, I think ultimately we're all going to meet the man. Good evening, you're on the air. Hi, Phil. This is Bob from New York. Hi, Bob. Bob Yeah, Bull. the reception uh, is pretty good over here in New York tonight. And um, I did want to mention that off, uh, off the top of my head. I did notice uh, you have, I'm hearing some kind of clicks uh, being broadcast. And I hear it on all my radios here. I don't know if you've got a loose connection someplace uh, or it's your, uh, your turntable. Nope. Uh, what you're oh. hearing is when I punch up a new CD, you're hearing those clicks. Okay, because I'm hearing it constantly uh, on and off during the whole broadcast. Tonight. Yeah, when I, when I queue up CDs, that's what you hear. Listen, are you listening? Yeah. You hear those? Yeah, I think so, yeah. That's what I'm doing. I'm queuing up CDs. Oh, okay, okay. Don't go off the deep end on me, partner. No, I'm just trying to <laughs> find out what's going on here. So, you know, sometimes I wonder if I'm getting uh, my place tapped. There ain't nothing going on, and they can't. <laughs> and 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 Bob, they can't tap you through your radio. Yeah. So you're you're going off the deep end. Don't do that. Okay. Okay. Hi, and I, we're really enjoying your program here. Well, thank you. And we, uh, keep up the good work, and uh, say hello to Pooh and uh, uh, your other daughter for me. Okay, I will. And uh, God bless. Thanks a lot. Okay. Take care. Good night. Good night, folks, and God bless each and every single one of you. Wake up. 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 General Quarters, General Quarters. All Americans, man your battle stations. Listening to 101.1 FM Eager. Thank you. 